Um, I apologize, I probably look kind of bad today. I only have concealer on because my skin was irritated and I didn't want to put a bunch of makeup on on that. Um, but anyways, today I am going to be showing you uh, what makeup tools you'll probably want to have in your makeup bag. So first let's talk about brands of makeup brushes. Makeup brushes run from high-end to drugstore to really cheap bargain brands just like makeup do. I don't really recommend the bargain brands that you can find on the internet because you never know what the quality will be like until you get them. At the same time, you don't necessarily have to go with the really high-end brands either because those tend to be really expensive. They typically run about $20 a brush and that really adds up when you're trying to build a collection of them. Personally, I feel like building up a decent collection of drugstore brushes can be really expensive without even bothering with the high-end brushes. Nevertheless, I'll give you some names of both some good drugstore brands and some high-end brands. Aside from price and theoretically quality, the main difference between drugstore brands and high-end brands is that drugstore brands can be found pretty much anywhere that sells makeup. Um, whereas the high-end brands can usually only be found at beauty stores like Ulta or Sephora or maybe at department stores like Macy's or Nordstrom. If you really do want to get the high-end brushes, you can look at brands like Japanese or It Brushes. And like I said, those tend to run about $20 a brush. Most of us really don't have that kind of money to spend on any one aspect of our cosplay. So instead, let's focus on drugstore brands. The two main drugstore brands that I know of are Eco Tools and Real Techniques. As the name implies, Eco Tools brushes are more green than most other brushes, and so if you're super, super concerned about the environment, you might take a look at those. Personally, I use Real Techniques brushes because I feel like they are good quality for the money and they are all synthetic, which makes them both cruelty-free and hypoallergenic. Real Techniques also has a slightly higher line of brushes called Bold Metals, which price-wise runs somewhere between the high-end brushes and drugstore brands. Let's get started on brush types, and I'm going to organize this by the product type just to make it a little less confusing. So obviously when you start your makeup routine, you start with foundation. And how you apply your foundation really depends on what type of foundation you're using. If you're using a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer, you're probably going to want a stippling brush, which I don't have one on hand to show you because I don't use one, but it's basically just a round brush with a flat top, and they're usually dual fiber like this brush, which means they have these long white fibers coupled with these short black fibers. If you're using a powder foundation, you're probably going to want something like this buffing brush, which you can see this is really dense, and it really just helps work the powder into your skin so that it stays in place. Then for liquid foundation, there are a few different methods you can use. You can use your hands, which I don't really recommend because it really just doesn't do a good job as using a real brush or sponge does. Um, you can use a little flat, I don't know how well you can see it, a little flat um, foundation brush like this. It doesn't have to be flat, but usually these are what are used for liquid foundation. Or you can use something like this Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Um, and a lot of people will also like to use a beauty blender from Sephora. Personally, I prefer this one just because it's $6 versus $20. And I like the shape a little bit better, but it's up to you. Generally, you're going to get more coverage with the brush than you will with the sponge. But sometimes I find a brush can give me a little too much coverage and it can just make you look very fake. And then something that kind of goes with foundation is concealer, and what you use to apply your concealer is really going to depend on where you're applying it, at least that's the case with me. Generally on my face, I use this little detailer brush to just kind of blend my concealer into my skin. If I have a really large blemish that I can't quite get with my regular concealer, I'll take a bit of my liquid concealer on the tip of this sponge and just kind of bop it onto the blemish. And then if I'm applying concealer under my eyes, I like to use this little Miracle um, Eraser Sponge. And this works great for just really working the concealer into the skin under my eyes without making it settle into my fine lines. 
But if you're going to do that, you do need to get it wet first. On that note, you also need to get the Miracle Complexion Sponge or the Beauty Blender wet before you apply in a liquid foundation to your skin. And then the next thing that you'll want to apply is your translucent powder. And before I go any further, let me explain what the difference is between powder foundation and translucent powder. Powder foundation is meant to cover and correct things, whereas translucent powder just goes over your foundation to make sure that it doesn't wear off during the day. And just like concealer, how you apply your translucent powder really depends on where you're applying it. For applying powder under my eyes, I generally use a dry mini eraser sponge and I just kind of put the powder on the flat tip of this and pat it under my eyes and that just helps keep the concealer from creasing. As for the rest of the face, you're generally going to want a very fluffy brush like this powder brush and most brands will just call it a powder brush. Uh, you do not want a very dense brush like this buffing brush because it will put the powder on too thickly and you'll end up looking like a no French noble from the 18th century. This, on the other hand, just puts a very light layer of the powder on so that your foundation stays in place but you don't look overly made up. And generally, I have found that when it comes to applying most makeup, it really depends more on the tool you use rather than the product for how good it looks. Of course, product quality does matter, but the tools seem to matter more, at least in my case. Let's move on to the eyes. When you're applying eyeshadow, you're generally going to want three different types of brushes. You're going to want ooh, hello, a base brush, a crease brush, and then something that you can use on your brow bone. And so what I use for my base brush is my base shadow brush. Obvious, right? At this point, you might notice that Real Techniques brushes are color-coded. Gold slash orange is for the face, like your foundation and stuff. And um, the purple is for the eyes, and then the pink is for things like blush and bronzer. Anyways, back to the eyeshadow. So my base shadow brush has the longest fibers out of all of my eyeshadow brushes. And it's kind of flat on the sides and it's just really good for applying eyeshadow on your lid or the entire eye area if you want to do that. And then what kind of crease brush you would need really kind of depends on what kind of eye shape you have. If you have kind of shallow eye sockets you might look for a dense crease brush like this. This is the essential crease brush from Real Techniques. Again this is good if you have a shallow eye socket. But, as I have a very deep socket, I find it's better to use this Essential Crease Brush. The fibers are about the same length as the Deluxe Crease Brush, but this one is less dense and just a little bit smaller, and I find that it creates a much cleaner look with my eyes because the Essential Crease Brush had a tendency to get eyeshadow on my nose. <laughs> then for your brow bone, you're generally going to want a brush that's kind of short and will just work to sweep the color onto your brow bone without getting it too much into the other areas. An angled shadow brush is really good for that. Um, I don't have one anymore. I used to have one. But um, I also use this shading brush. And then if you're into the smoky eye look, you might want something like this accent brush, which just has these short, stiff bristles, and it's really good for applying eyeshadow to your lower lash line. Now let's move on to eyeliner, and what you use to apply your eyeliner really depends on what kind of eyeliner you're using. If you're using a liquid or pencil liner, you don't really need a liner brush. But if you're using a gel liner, it's really good to have either an angled liner brush or a fine tip liner brush. The fine pointed brush is very good if you're very experienced with eyeliner and you want a really precise line. The angled eyeliner brush is a little bit more beginner friendly and I find it a little bit easier to control. And then finally your brows. Even if you're like me and you don't bother trying to conceal your brows or anything, there's still a few essential tools that you'll want to have. The first of which is a lash and brow groomer. This is one of the few brushes I have that is not real techniques. Um, this is from a brush that, that I got as a gift when I was 16 and I'm desperately holding on to the last few of them because the other ones all wore out. So basically you just use this to brush out your eyebrows so that they're not sticking up everywhere and then you can use the comb side 
to um, comb out your eyelashes in case they're sticking together or they've got mascara clumps on them to just clean them up a little bit. Alternatively, if you don't have one of these, you can use one of these standalone mascara wands and these work really well for the same thing of just combing out your brows. And then the final thing that you'll need is an angled brow brush like this one. And these work really well for applying eyeshadow or um, eyebrow gel to your eyebrows to just help define them. And if you use a brush like this to define your brows, it will give you a little bit of control over the shape that people see without having to like pluck or wax your eyebrows or something. If you haven't already guessed, I have more brushes for my eyes than I do anything else. So the final step in the makeup process is applying contour and lip color. And let's start with applying your bronzer for sculpting. Typically what I use for applying bronzer is this Miracle Sculpting Sponge. It works great for applying a cream bronzer. However, it does have a tendency to create a very definite line between my contour and my real skin. And so what I use to blend that out is this sculpting brush. This is a very dense brush that works really well for blending out my contour um, or applying a powder bronzer. And then for my highlighter, because I'm not going to apply quite as much highlight as I will bronzer, I use this setting brush. This is a soft, medium dense brush that I find works really well for creating a soft, natural highlight. Then to highlight my nose, I use this fan brush because it's so narrow and it just fits perfectly on the bridge of my nose. And then alternatively, you could use a dual fiber contour brush like this one to apply both your bronzer and your highlight. Um, I haven't actually tried that yet because this is a brand new brush. And then for applying blush, I've been using this contour brush, but I'm going to be switching to this cheek brush because I it's a little bit bigger and fluffier and I just like the shape better for applying blush. And then finally for the finishing touch, you may find it helpful to have a lip brush like this. There's nothing wrong with using the applicator that comes with your lipstick or lip gloss, but using a lip brush will give you a little bit more of precise control over where it goes, as well as a little bit more control over how intense the color is. Also, if you have a lip and cheek palette like this, it's really helpful to have one of these. By the way, if you're a guy and you just want to apply some makeup so that you look good on camera, you don't really need all of this. All you need is some foundation, primer, setting spray, translucent powder, and the tools to use those things. I know that sounds like a lot, but it is way less than what girls need. And then finally, before I go, I want to talk about how to clean your brushes. How often you need to clean your brushes really depends on how often you're using them. If you're using them every day, then you probably need to clean them once a week. If you're like me and you use them maybe once a month, you probably can go every few months without doing it. However, if you're at a convention and you're planning to wear different eyeshadows for each costume, I would recommend cleaning the eyeshadow brushes in between because otherwise um, you can end up with some of the previous costume's eyeshadow in your current one. would also recommend cleaning a new brush before you use it. So, of course, you might be wondering, how in the world do I clean my brushes? And there are a few different methods, but here's the one that I use. I use this Real Techniques brush cleansing palette and this cleansing gel. And no, this is not the Real Techniques cleansing gel. It's Bare Minerals, but I found these two work really well together. So you just pour a little of the gel in here, run some water over it, swirl your brush around in it, and that works really well to get it clean. You don't have to use this cleansing palette, this is just what I use, but you could also use a damp washcloth. I also use this to clean my sponges, and if you do that, I recommend you only go over these larger bumps because these smaller ones can tear your sponge. Um, it doesn't work quite as well for getting my sponges clean as it does my brushes. There's probably a better way to clean my sponges, but I haven't had time to figure that out. Um, but maybe that's why they say to replace the sponges every three months. Anyway, I hope that was helpful and that now you have a better idea of what you need in your makeup bag. Sayonara!